Thank you, Kate. <laughs> what do you want to change in the world? <clears throat> what can you do to make it happen? As a civil servant working in government, it's part of my job to lead change that improves outcomes for people. Outcomes like living longer, healthier lives. And I'm particularly interested in how governments can work with communities to lead change. How do you want government to work with you and with your community? I'm guessing that you don't always want to be passive recipients of solutions developed somewhere else. And so I want to suggest to you today that um, change can start here. Whatever here is for you. The Scottish Government is exploring new ways of leading change with communities across Scotland. The evidence tells us that, that solutions produced by communities themselves can lead to better results for people. And we know that people have a, 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 want to a, a, a engage and participate in change about things that matters to them. And so last year, we, we tried something new. We kicked off with a public event in Edinburgh for 200 people. People came from all different um, sectors and backgrounds, and they brought their ideas for, for change. I was representing the Scottish Government, and with my colleagues at that event, we tried out some new approaches. We brought questions rather than answers. We listened to what communities cared about as the starting point for leading change. And we discussed how it felt to be working in these different sorts of ways. Now, talking about feelings and emotions isn't perhaps the most natural behaviour for civil servants. <laughs> After the event, someone came up to me and said, I didn't know civil servants could be like that. <laughs> Today, I want to invite you to reflect on what change you want to lead in the world and whether choosing a new approach could help. The event I mentioned there was part of something called ULAB. ULAB is just one of several more participative ways of working which the Scottish Government has, has been experimenting with, and ULAB will continue again this year. All of these approaches are premised on the idea that change starts here. I played only a small role in bringing ULAB to life in Scotland. It was a collaborative effort across the whole country. But I want to touch on it briefly because of what it illustrates and because of what I learned. ULAB is a public participation and learning platform for transformation and change. It has been developed by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, based in Boston, and it's free and open to anyone to participate in. Its core purpose is to encourage people to explore inside themselves what they really care about, to explore their sense of an emerging future, and then turn those ideas into action. For those of us in government, this brought a new way of working. We weren't introducing new legislation, and we weren't consulting on proposals that we had already developed. Instead, we were convening conversations with communities like here in Portobello about what, what mattered to them and then helping those change, changes to be brought to life. Over a thousand people all across Scotland participated in, in ULAB last year, and over 70 self-organised supporting groups um, sprang up all across the country. People participated from all different backgrounds, from, from social enterprises, the third sector, public sector, from business, um, and from academia. And it gave birth to a range of new ideas for leading change. Ideas like creating a place to support innovative businesses in Scotland's most rural and remote areas. Ideas like encouraging science and technology students to become champions of equality and diversity. And ideas like involving older people as part of design teams to tackle a range of social challenges from tackling obesity through to 
um, empty high streets. It also generated some of the most positive feedback about a public policy initiative I've ever had in 25 years of working in government. <laughs> People really like the idea that change starts here. One of the participants blogged, thank you for taking a brave approach, an approach which empowers people. But that's not the end of the story. Because I learned something more important about my experience with ULAB. And in retrospect, it's been true actually of every change initiative I've been involved with. And it's this. Before change can start here, it has to start here, inside us. The reason why I think people find new labs so powerful is because it encourages you to look inside of yourself and to lead change about, about what you care about. It's not just what you think is important that matters, but what you feel is important. It encourages you to connect to your curiosities and your passions and to act with purpose. It's an approach that balances the intelligence of the head with the intelligence of the heart. To lead change because you care, not just because it's your job. And for me personally, this has been both liberating and challenging. Challenging because when I stopped relying so heavily on the traditional methods of leading change, things like setting goals and objectives based on what I already know, other aspects of myself were called into question. I had to ask myself, how skilled am I at working in these different sorts of ways? How skilled do you think you would be? I had to ask myself, how skilled am I at listening? To, listening, to listen without judging and without jumping in to debate the other person's point of view. For much of my career, I had done the opposite. I had argued why the evidence said that this or that was the right thing to do. I had to ask myself, how skilled am I at convening conversations where the whole point is to surface multiple different points of view and not necessarily achieve a consensus? Again, for much of my career, I had felt a sense of expectation that I should bring the answers. And now it was my my ability to hold the questions that counted. And how comfortable was I really with the idea of letting go of power and control over things that I felt responsible for? That did not sit easily with me, <laughs> and it did not feel much like the traditional form of government. So this isn't an easy path to follow. What might some of the uncomfortable questions be for you? For me, this has felt risky. It hasn't felt orderly or predictable or safe. It's felt like my protective armour has been stripped away. And, and that gets me to the heart of why I feel so strongly that change has to start here inside us before it can start anywhere else. Because there's a paradox at the core of this. My deepest fears about working in this sort of way are exactly the sorts of things that I need to recognise and then let go of. I don't know about you, but I carry a fear of making a big mistake. I carry a fear of feeling out of my depth and a fear of being embarrassed. What if people don't like what they see of the more authentic, exposed me? And yet I know that I, like, I need to let people see who they're really dealing with. I need to let them judge for themselves whether or not I'm trustworthy. And, and that means I need to be prepared to make myself more vulnerable and to let, my see, to let myself be more fully seen. So there's a choice for each of us to make. Which path do we follow? On the one hand, there's the path of relying on the traditional approaches for change and relying on those technical skills which we've attached so much importance to. On the other hand, there's the path of 
starting change from in here and doing the work that that requires? Which would you choose? My experience is that if I choose the second path, there's no avoiding my uncomfortable questions. And my fears are more exposed, so it's a brave choice. I need to connect my inner change work with my outer change work. I need to become more aware of my own emotions and of other people's emotions so that I can hold open those courageous, generative conversations which are so important for leading change. And I need to acknowledge what I'm afraid of and deal with that if it's getting in the way of me being able to connect with other people and to help them lead change where they are. I choose that path. I choose it, first of all, because it works. I've seen the results in the changes brought to life in communities and in the energy that it unleashes. And in terms of the role of government, people really appreciate our more open collaborative behaviours and they appreciate the whole person showing up and being more than just our point of view. And secondly, I choose that path because when I do the work in here and lead change from in here, I feel so much more energised. I'm using much more of me in my work and I feel more able to deal with the, the challenges and respond to the opportunities of the future. In particular, I'm using the more relational and emotional skills that we sometimes pretend don't belong there. So, what am I saying? The traditional approaches for leading change are still important. They do have their place, but they're not enough. There's an appetite for change here in Scotland and an appetite to participate. I invite you to ask yourselves, what do I have inside of me that I feel called to do? How much more effectively could I bring that to life, bring my ideas into action, if I tried a new approach? And could that brave choice be worth it? It has been for me, and it could be for you too, because before change can start here, it has to start here. Thank you.